Once upon a time, a wizard trapped an evil demon inside a magic bottle and hid the bottle in the depths of the forest where he hoped it would never be found. On the outskirts of the forest lived John the Woodcutter and his son, Frederick. I know you want to go to school, son, but schools are expensive. But father, after I graduate, I'll be making lots of money and you won't have to work anymore. No, your education is just going to have to wait. As it is, I can barely afford to pay for our clothing and food. I can't even afford to buy another axe, which I sorely need. So how can I send you to school? By working together. I'll work with you every day, Father. Work from sunup to sundown, and then when we go to town, you'll have twice as much wood to sell. And by the end of the summer, we might have earned enough to pay for my schooling. Yes, we might. We'll borrow an axe from our neighbor and start first thing tomorrow. I'm proud of you, son. Your willingness to work hard for what you want is a sure sign of just how much you've grown up. You should be proud of yourself, Father. You've taught me everything I know, and when I graduate from school and start earning a good living, I'll prove how grateful I am by giving you all the wonderful things that money can buy. But first, you'll have to learn how to use an axe. I'm ready when you are. strong, Father. Not like I used to be. Phew, my back is killing me. I used to work all day long without an ache or a pain, but those days are gone forever. I never realized how hard you work, Father. If you ask me, the town folk aren't paying you enough. Let's have lunch. You can rest a while. You're right. I could use a bit of rest at that. Here, this is yours. Thank you, Father. Here, Father. Take this. I don't need this huh? much. You should eat it, son. If not, you won't be able to go on. Remember, we're both working until sundown. I won't get tired. I'm just going to take a little walk in the woods and look around. We're not here to take walks, son. We're here to work. If you go off playing in the woods, you'll be too tired to work this afternoon. Frederick, come back! <laughs> don't worry. I won't go that far. I'll be back in a few minutes. They are. Help! Let me out of here! Huh? I thought I heard a voice just now. Hello? Is anyone there? Oh well, guess not. Help me! I'm over here! Where? Not over there! Over here! Look to your left and you'll see a giant oak tree! I'm down at the bottom, stuck between the roots! Clear away the leaves and you'll see me! A talking bottle? <gasps> Let me out! Will you help me? Please, please, please! You poor little thing, of course I'll help you. I'll let you out of there right now. <laughs> I thank you for letting me out. Your kindness shall not go unrewarded. I am in your debt and deeply grateful. Oh, wonderful. What's to be my reward? You've been so kind. I'll swallow you whole instead of eating you in little tiny bites. Oh, no! Yum. Oh, yes. We've got to follow the rules. And I assure you that according to the rules, anyone foolish enough to let me out of the bottle has got to be eaten. <laughs> Get away from me! <laughs> Goodbye, little boy. Wait a minute. I was the one who let you out of that little bottle. You can't eat me. That wouldn't be fair. I'm sorry, fellow, but I gotta follow the rules just like everybody else does. But I taste awful. You'll get indigestion. <laughs> troublemaker, huh? I am not a troublemaker. I don't mind being eaten by a real spirit, but how do I know you are what you say you are and not some kind of phony? Are you blind? You were the one who released me from the bottle. You saw it with your own eyes. But how do I know it wasn't some sort of trick? If you're really a spirit and can make yourself so small, you'll have to prove it to me by going back inside that bottle. If you can do that, you can eat as much of me as you like. Real nice of you. I can't force you to do anything you don't want to do, but if I were you, I would feel...
feel obligated to prove that I was a real spirit. But that's up to you, not me. Hmm. Well, then, if it's proof you want, just watch this. Ready. This is the bottle, right? Certainly is. <laughs> You see, now are you satisfied? Hey, let me out! Outwitted you, didn't I? That's not fair! Yeah. You cheated! You tricked me! You've forgotten that you tricked me before I tricked you, and turnabout's fair play. Besides, if I let, let you out, out, you'd make a meal of me in no oh. time. You mean you really thought that I was going to eat you? I was only joking! I'm much too nice to do anything huh? like that! Really? How do I know you're telling the truth? I'll make you a solemn promise! Please, have a heart! I'll give you anything you want! I mean it! I have the power to make you wealthy beyond your wildest dreams. <gasps> please, please, I feel like I'm suffocating. <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's make a deal. Before I let you out of this bottle, you have to promise to never harm any human being ever again. Do you solemnly swear? Solemnly, I do swear. I believe you. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me repay you as a token of my appreciation and gratitude. Here, this is a very special magical cloth. Rub it on any sort of metal, and that metal will instantly become silver. And silver's worth a great deal of money. Uh, did you say anything metal I rub with this cloth will become silver automatically? Absolutely right, my friend. You're going to become a very wealthy young man. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to stretch my legs. I haven't been able to take a good walk for over 400 years. Bye. Hmm, all I have to do is rub. Great! <laughs> Rub the cloth on metal and it becomes silver! That's fabulous! Father! Hey, Father! Where have you been, son? You were gone for a very long time. I was becoming worried. Gee, I'm sorry. Father, something wonderful just happened to me. There was this really big tree and buried under the If you the have leaves. a story to tell, I'll listen to it later. Right now, we have work to do. Uh, Come along, don't dawdle. But, Father... I don't mean to throw a wet blanket on your story, son, but if I can cut one more tree, you'll be returning to school that much sooner. Father, will you please stop? I'm trying to tell you what I found under the leaves at the base of this oak tree. I'm getting mad, son, and you're trying my patience. If you're tired and don't want to work, sit down. But... Oh. All our money problems will be over with this magic cloth. <laughs> this is a very special magical cloth. Rub it on any sort of metal and that metal will be instantly turned into silver. I can make silver out of my axe. Let's work some magic. I've been tricked. That spirit lied about this cloth. Oh, fooey. This axe sure got heavy all of a sudden. <laughs> Maybe that axe is too heavy for you. You should have stayed here instead of prowling the forest. My experience has taught me to always rest after eating a meal. It's not that I'm tired, it's the axe. It's become so heavy. <laughs> Look what you've done. How in the world did that happen? Now I'm going to have to replace this axe. That means no profit today. Work all day and not make one penny? I hope you're satisfied. I didn't mean it. <gasps> Is that silver? <laughs> the spirit told the truth. Now I can pay for a new axe and go back to school. Father! Mm. Father, I'll pay to replace mm. the axe. It's my responsibility, and I accept it. Mm. Don't be a fool. You don't have any money. Mm. Don't worry. I'll find a way to pay for the axe. You just stay out of my way. I've got work to do. You could finish it tomorrow. Why don't we quit and head back home? You foolish boy. How can I get the money to pay for the axe? Unless I go on working. I know what I have to do. Even if you don't, I know all about trees. Mm. And money doesn't grow on them. But this is my first time so deep in the forest. What if I lost my way? I could get hurt. And besides, Father, you should be mm. taking it much slower. Remember, you're not as young mm. as you used to be. Uh, you know, I think you've got a point there, son. Let's go home. Father, I'll be back in a little while. I'm going to try to sell the axe to someone in town. You won't get much for that thing. 
I can't imagine there's going to be much of a market for a bent axe, but you get the best price you can, whatever it is. It'll help. Don't worry, I'll do fine. Bye. Don't be ridiculous. This is a jewelry store, not a pawn shop. What use would I have for an old axe? Look here, don't be so stupid. You look like an intelligent young man, so why don't you take this piece of junk somewhere else and huh? stop wasting my time? If you take a closer look, I'm sure you'll want to buy it. I'll say one thing for you, you're persistent. But I simply have no use for a piece of junk like that. But it's silver. Huh? See? Oh, my, my, my. Well, it certainly looks like the real thing. Yes, that's right. This axe is made of pure silver, but if you don't want it... No, wait a second, wait. Don't be so bullheaded. Why don't I put it on the scale? I'm sure we can come to some kind of an agreement. We'll just put the silver there, and we place the counterweight here, and it looks like it weighs about eight kilograms. Yes, eight kilograms exactly? Hey. <laughs> Father, come out here. See what I've brought you. Where did you get all those things, my boy? I sold the axe for a very good price, and there's enough left over for the neighbor to buy a brand new one. I simply can't believe that anyone would pay that much for an old axe. Now we have enough money to pay for your education, and you can be a doctor. Okay? <laughs> yes, Father, but now there's no hurry. What's that? But that's what you've wanted to be all of your life. Perhaps I'll do that someday, but now I don't have to go to school in order to make money. How else are you going to make a living unless you go to work? I'll show you. What do you need the axe for? What's going on? Just keep watching. Careful, Frederick. That's my only yeah. axe. <gasps> Are you out of your mind? That axe is the only way I have to make a living, and now you've ruined it. Yes, but take a closer look, Father, and tell me if it hasn't become silver. Silver? I can't believe my eyes. You see, I can turn any metal into pure silver, thanks to this magical cloth I found. Understand? So I don't have to have an education to learn how to make a living. Oh. We can live in luxury, and neither of us will ever have to work again. That's selfish. I want you to go to school to become a doctor and help others, not yourself. Why turn your back on good fortune? Here, I'll show you how it works. Now, how can you call that selfish? I haven't taken anything from anyone. Now, turn this axe back into steel at once, Frederick. I can't cut down any trees with this. Father, you don't have to chop down trees now. We're rich. Nonsense. I've been a woodcutter all my life and will continue to be one. I need to borrow one of these. Wait, Father, where are you going? Since you've ruined my only axe, I'll have to go and buy another one. Oh, he'll come around. It's time for me to get busy and do a little dusting. <laughs> A pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> it's not often I get to see the real thing. I'll have more in no time. Of course. See you soon. I hope you don't mind keeping the change. Hey, hey that's, that's a real real Out of my way! Wee! Hurry, pick up the money. Get all you can! <laughs> this is fun! <laughs> Father, I thought you were going out to buy yourself a new axe. But instead, you bought a used one, and now you have to spend your evening sharpening it. Why'd you do that? I've told you I need a sharp axe to do my work. That's true, but we're wealthy now, and you can have as many new axes as you want. Just say the word, and I'll go buy them for you. Take a look at what I've brought you. A new shirt and some new boots of excellent quality. I know it gets awfully cold out there in the woods, and these are guaranteed to keep you warm. Huh? I don't need any new clothes. I'm afraid you'll have to return them. You know, I don't understand your attitude at all, Father. What's wrong with being wealthy? Oh, all I'm trying to do is make us comfortable. But you're treating me like some sort of a criminal. I'm trying to help. Yes, you're trying to help. But you're doing it the wrong way. You depend on that cloth for everything. Throw it away. Uh, no! As long as we have that cloth, we can live in luxury forever! One way or another, you'll pay a price for that cloth. You can't get something for nothing. Life doesn't work that way. It does for me! <laughs> Redrick! Oh. <laughs>
I'm not as young as I used to be, you know. <coughs> That's a bad cough. I'm taking you home. Oh, life is a ball when you've got lots of money, buddy, 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 buddy. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> we father. <coughs> Father, what's wrong? Father, what's the matter? Are you sick? Uh, I'm afraid this is goodbye. Don't say that. All you need is a doctor. I'll find you the best there is. The very best that money can buy. I don't need a doctor. Huh? <coughs> I'm too far gone for that. Stop that. All you need is a doctor and then you'll be just fine. No, son. All I want is one final wish. Will you grant it to me? I promise I'll do whatever you ask. <sighs> the cloth. Throw it away, son. You must promise me. You must learn to depend on yourself alone. Only then can you become a man of honor. Son, I love you. <laughs> I promise I'll throw it away. I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry, Father. The next day, Frederick sat in front of the fire, determined to do his father's bidding. But as he remembered the wonderful things the magic cloth had brought him, his resolve began to weaken. Enjoy! Oh, aren't you wonderful? <laughs> hmm, I'd be a fool to throw this magic cloth away. The cloth has been destroyed! <gasps> oh, 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 I want my magic cloth. Oh! <laughs> I want my magic cloth! Give it back! <sighs> I must talk to the spirit and have him give me another magic cloth. I must have another one. <sighs> Gotta be here someplace. Oh, this is the place. a lot of hard work, harder than you might imagine. I know, Father, but I'll work hard, and when I'm older, I'll go to school and learn how to be a doctor and make a good living. Then you won't have to work anymore. Well, son, I'm really looking forward to that day. 